Congressman Vicente Gonzalez, thank you for inviting us to your office here in McAllen. You have just returned from a trip to Central America. First of all, let's talk about the trip to Mexico. Where did you go and what was it all about? Well, uh, we met with the incoming cabinet officials for uh, AMLO in Mexico City. Uh, so we met with his chief of staff, we met with the foreign minister that's coming in, and we also got to meet with uh, the chief uh, NAFTA negotiator for the country of Mexico. So we were able to talk trade, uh, border security, and uh, just issues that are come on our horizon. And how did you get on with the um, AMLO official? We got along very well, actually. His chief of staff, uh, Alfonso Romo, was actually from Monterey. He's a businessman, a uh, very centered, uh, middle of the road type of person. Um, I'm, I'm quite impressed with the cabinet that he's putting together. We had a story recently where we interviewed Keith Patridge from the McAllen Economic Development Corporation, and he liked the fact that one of AMLO's proposals really impacts the border region, and that is the reduction of the sales tax a fee for the border region, so it's more in line with the US. He thinks that will spur uh, economic activity along the border. A couple of other measures as well that he likes. So the business community likes some of his policies. Yeah. Your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, I think uh, they've got some good ideas. I think he's got some bright uh, folks from the business sector that are advising him. Uh, when we were there, we talked about uh, creating another uh, free trade zone. Uh, on the other side of the border and different other regions around the country that are not in effect now. Uh, we talked about immigration and how they could be helpful on Mexico's southern border. A lot of the issues that we deal with here I think could be addressed on Mexico's southern border. As you know, Mexico now has a negative net migration. Uh, more Mexican nationals are going back to Mexico than coming to the United States. And uh, the, most of the immigration that we're dealing with now is coming from three Central American countries, which is El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala. I think um, if we engage Mexico uh, in a more diplomatic way and find ways to address uh, that mass migration on Mexico's southern border, everything we're doing here now, detention centers, asylum hearings, and other issues that are being addressed here could be done at, in Mexico's southern border. Uh, in 2006, we gave Mexico $80 million, and they stopped, with $80 million, they stopped more migration at their border than we did in our entire 2000 mile border. And I think we need to start uh, having creative ideas to address the problems that we're dealing with. I don't know if this is his policy, but I have read uh, news stories where he also wants to change the dynamic uh, as regards the drug policy. And yeah, there's been some stories we out We talked there. about that, actually. Well, what's, what's his plan? Well, um, he, he talked about legalizing marijuana. That's an issue that, that, that I think is important to them, that they think we're wasting a lot of uh, law enforcement resources on, uh, on, on marijuana, where we have 37 states in the United States where it's legal in one form or another. So the tide seems to be moving in that direction, and I think Mexico uh, wants to address it uh, on a federal level. They also talked about uh, potential uh, amnesty agreements with cartel leaders. And uh, that's certainly way out of the box, right? It's telling people, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna let you off the hook, but uh, you gotta stop now. And you gotta help us secure your region where you operate. Those are you know, certainly out of the box ideas. Um, what I'm trying to do is bring security to our border and to assure violence is down, uh, uh, drugs uh, are not coming across as freely as they are now, and certainly uh, try to prevent arms from going south. So it's not the, the case that his change in, in drug policy and his opposition to the war on drugs, it wouldn't mean that Mexico, he's legalizing all drugs, so they, you, you just tax the drugs and let them flow That's northwards, right. and, and the only problem is right on the border itself. He's not, he's not for legalizing that's right. It's, it's marijuana only. And, and, and oddly enough, we had a congressman from Nevada who uh, was able to talk about his experiences now with marijuana being legal in the state of Nevada, recreationally legal. Uh, apparently, they've raised $10 billion in taxes this year alone, and that money is being used for education. So, um, you know, not everyone may agree with that immediately, but we need to address it somehow. 
Obviously, the policy that's been in place for decades now has not worked. Uh, we're spending a lot of money on drug uh, enforcement, and right now we have some major issues with opioids, cocaine, uh, heroin, methamphetamines, uh, other type of pharmaceuticals that are flowing across the border. And when we're stopping marijuana, uh, we're using resources that could maybe be used to uh, address some of these heavier drugs. So cautiously optimistic about the new president and his, his, his administration I am. coming in in December. I am. I, I, think, uh, I think it's a lot better than some of the rhetoric you hear out there. Uh, I was very impressed with the cabinet that he's put together and, and uh, we, we met with Secretary Ebrard, who was the uh, mayor of Mexico City, who did a fabulous job in bringing security to the city. We hope that he can expand that nationwide. And we met with his chief of staff, Alfonso Romo, who's from Monterey, a, a very successful businessman. So that should give a lot of confidence to our business community that he's being advised by very capable uh, people. And uh, I think, you know, the campaign is over. The political rhetoric has toned way down. Um, I'm, I'm waiting to see some good action. Yeah, and it's so important that you have these good lines of communication communication when he does take office that you right. can just pick up the phone you've made those contacts and you started that relationship that's right that's the idea I, I would like to invite them to our district and and have them come meet uh, people here in our border community AMLO to visit the valley I would like that very good um, and next Guatemala you also visited Guatemala which has obviously been in the news this year because of the number of uh, residents that have been coming up here seeking asylum, escaping, fleeing the violence. Right. What did you learn there? Well, it's, it's my second visit. We have a very good relationship with uh, President Morales of, of Guatemala and his uh, ambassador in, in Washington, D.C. And what we're trying to do is find uh, ways to address uh, the migration issue in these countries and find ways to incentivize people to want to stay home. And what we did, we picked out uh, the regions where people are the most likely to migrate from and trying to come up with uh, farm programs. For example, they did this uh, in, in Chiapas of Mexico and it kept people home and kept people uh, from leaving. And uh, we, we, USA has a few programs where we teach some farmers how to bring productivity uh, from where they are now, and where they increase productivity fourfold or fivefold. Uh, we're trying to see how we can bring foreign investment especially small manufacturing to regions uh, to create employment and, and also address security issues. The two reasons people are leaving these countries is one, insecurity, and two, lack of economic opportunity. And uh, you know, we always, I've mentioned this before, we always talk about the crisis on the border, but we never really talk about how we got here. And still to this day, we're not addressing how we got here. And I think it, you know, the problem didn't begin and is not ending here on our border. Uh, we need to get to the root of it. Uh, where are the, or exactly are the people migrating from within that country? There are usually two or three regions within that country that bring most of the migration. Uh, address the insecurity issues in those regions and try to find foreign investment and also more productivity within local business folks to, uh, to employ these people and, and keep them home. And so on that visit, did you get a sense of Obviously, you learned which areas were violent, and that's where most of the residents are coming from. But did, did you uh, get a sense of just how dangerous it is to live there and what the cause is? Yes, um, particularly in El Salvador. I was there with Sister Norma Pimentel a few months ago. Uh, El Salvador, you could just feel the tension in the, in the country. Uh, there's a high level of insecurity. And in Guatemala, it's less so and it's concentrated in certain regions, but it still needs to be addressed. The president is trying to address uh, insecurity. I think within those three countries, Guatemala is probably in the best shape, but certainly has a ways to go. Um, and and you know, trying to think of creative ideas that we can uh, address and, and solve the problem where it begins. It stands to reason that congressmen like yourself and Congressman Vela, Congressman Cuellar, et cetera, uh, Congressman O'Rourke, border congressmen have the most stake in ensuring good security, good trade, etc., with our 
neighbors Mexico and, and trade through Central America. You go down there, you, you do fact-finding missions, you really learn a lot. When you get back to Washington, how easy it is, is it for you to spread the word, to, to inform your colleagues in the house of what you learned down there? How, do they show any interest? Does it ever shape pub, public policy? Well, um, Central America um, is a tough issue that sometimes is not the most popular issue. Uh, so, but I, I try to talk to my friends on foreign affairs, uh, certainly within the Hispanic caucus. Uh, I, I had a fact-finding report that I sent out to them and, and uh, when there's issues that, uh, that impact those countries that we're going to vote on in the House, uh, I certainly hope to be a resource. Anything else you want to say about Guatemala? Well, um, I think they have a lot of resources within their country. It's a very rich little country, but it has not really explored so many possibilities. For example, we were down, we went to visit the, the, the area with the pyramid where Tikal is. They have almost zero migration from that region because everybody's employed, everybody has jobs, everybody's doing well. There's a, uh, another area called the, the Mirador Basin with 51 lost Mayan cities. It's just amazingly beautiful. That has billions of dollars of potential uh, tourist dollars. And I think we need to find uh, some investment for that region to be able to create employment and security. And I think that they have the resources, they just need to work them a little harder and, and with a better uh, method. Congressman Gonzalez, thank you so much for today's interview. Thank you. Uh, the readers and, and viewers of the Rio Grande Guardian and uh, the listeners on KMB, uh, KMBH 88 FM are going to be so interested on, on how you, you got on on that visit. And uh, we thank you for for sharing uh, your experiences down there with us. Uh, such an important topic, both Mexico and Guatemala. Thank so thank you very much for today's interview. Absolutely, anytime, thank you Steve.